Welcome to another episode of Talking Sports with Manny, and this is your host, Manny. Let's get it, y'all. Pretty exciting draft this weekend. Um, it was pretty much predictable to start out. Uh, Joe Burrow went number one. Chase Young, number two to the Redskins. Jeff Okuda. Now, pick number four, Andrew Thomas was a bit of a surprise. Not that, you know, that, that the Giants were not going to get a tackle, but for the fact that it was Andrew Thomas. Some say that he wasn't the best tackle in the draft, but uh, maybe the Giants felt he was a perfect fit for them. Uh, Tua went number five, so Miami didn't have to trade up. Justin Herbert went six uh, to the Chargers, so they get their uh, franchise quarterback. Um, Derek Brown went seven, and Isaiah Simmons went eight to the Cardinals. Some uh, feel that that's a steal right there. Um, Jacksonville took a corner at number nine. I really thought that Jacksonville was going to take a receiver, either C.D. Lamb or Jerry Judy. But they were building that defense, so they went um, Henderson at 9. Uh, Jijic Wells went number 10 to the Browns, who were a potential uh, suitor for Trent Williams. We'll get into the Trent Williams trade in a minute. Um, Minka Becton went number 11. Henry Ruggs went number 12. That was a shocker. I didn't think that Henry Ruggs would be the first um, receiver taken, but that started the domino right there. Then uh, Tristan Riffs went number 13 to Tampa Bay. So Tampa Bay got to get a uh, tackle that they solely needed. Uh, Javon Kinlaw uh, to the San Francisco 49ers. They actually traded down with um, Tampa Bay. Tampa, Tampa Bay went up one pick, and then um, San Francisco went down one pick to gain an extra fourth rounder. Um, Jerry Judy went number 15 to the Broncos. I really like that fit with Cortland Sutton on the other side. Jerry Judy um, as their number one receiver. I, I feel that Jerry Judy is the best receiver in his draft. Um, he has a lot of talent. Others will say C.D. Lamb. Um, Atlanta wanted to trade up into the top 10 and draft a cornerback, but they couldn't find any takers. So they were able to get A.J. Troy out of Clemson. Um, at pick number 17, CD Lamb was available and the Dallas Cowboys took him there at 17. All because Oakland took rugs. Um, it just started that domino and, you know, you take the best player available. That's why I believe that the draft should be before free agency had the Dallas Cowboys gotten C.D. Lamb and then free agency is coming up next. I don't think that they would have paid Amari Cooper or you don't have to pay Amari Cooper. So it's kind of backwards how you have free agency, then the draft. It should be the other way around draft. Then whatever you don't draft, you go fill those needs. But that's just me talking. Um, Austin Jackson went number 18. They really like this kid out of um, USC uh, to protect their new quarterback tour. Uh Another surprise pick at number 19 was Damon Arnett out of Ohio State. He played with Jeff Okuda and um, Chase Young. He's a very good corner, but I really thought he'll go late first round, maybe mid-second round, but he went pick 19. Um, Once again, Oakland is the reach kings. They reach every year, and they reached for Arnett. I'm not saying that Arnett Arnett is not going to be a good corner and a good pro. I'm just saying... You could have got him a little later. But anyways. Um, what other picks were interesting? At 21, Jalen Ragor. It's interesting that the Eagles took Ragor. I felt that Justin Jefferson was a better fit. But I guess they still believe in Alshon, um, Alshon Jeffries. So maybe you get that guy on the outside. Um, they really need speed. So. They went Jalen Rago out of, out of TCU. Then the Vikings were able to get Justin Jefferson at pick 22. That's a great value pick. Somebody who, who can come in and replace Stephon Diggs. So I think they made out pretty well trading that pick to the Bills. 
uh, Kenneth Murray, who, you know, was slowed by injuries because of injuries he dropped. Uh, the Chargers were able to get him at this pick. Uh, they actually traded up to get him. So that's a um, that's a value pick right there. We'll see how that works out as they continue to build that defense. Cesar Ruiz went 24 to the Saints. That's another surprising pick. Brandon Ayuk went uh, 25 to the uh, 49ers. Um, they got to replace Emmanuel Sanders. And to me, I think that's an upgrade right there. Uh, Jordan Love was a surprise pick at 26. Nobody knows why. <laughs> why Jordan Love was picked. Uh, and Green Bay actually traded up to get him. Yeah, I know years ago, you know, they had Favre and then they drafted Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers sat a couple years and came in and blew it up. So Aaron Rodgers is about, I think he's 36 right now. He'll be 37 soon. So they're already thinking about the future. Aaron Rodgers has three years left on his contract. Uh, we'll see if he finishes out if he finishes all three years with Green Bay. But Jordan Love is going to be able to sit back and learn from one of the best in the game. Um, Patrick Queen went 28 to the Ravens. That's another pretty good pick right there. Isaiah Wilson. That was a bit of a surprise for the Titans at 29. Now, I know he played at Georgia, and I know Andrew Thomas was there. You know, these guys are the guys protecting for Swift and Fromm. But Isaiah Wilson, he's a big kid. He's a bit raw. Um, but Titans getting him in the first round, they can really get to build off of what he can do in the future. Um, Miami took another um, corner at uh, pick 30. Uh, Jeff Gladney went to Minnesota. So Minnesota was able to come out with a, a, with a starter, a starting receiver and a starting corner in the first round. And um, the last pick of the first round was Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I think he is the best running back in his draft, especially the best pass catching running back in his draft. So you already have Tyreek Hill, Mahomes, Kelsey, Watkins, Hardman, all this speed and all this talent on this Kansas City offense. And then you add a dynamic running back. Who is going to be able to stop these guys? All right, let's take a look at um, the second round of the draft. That's kind of where you saw superstar um, potential tight. Um, sorry, superstar potential safeties and superstar a potential receivers, even though that, I mean, receivers are all over the draft, but uh, Cincinnati took T Higgins uh, with the first pick of the second round. Uh, Michael Pittman went to the Colts. Uh, DeAndre Swift running back out of Georgia went to the Lions. So it's interesting to see that the Lions don't really trust carry on Johnson. They get a talent like DeAndre Swift, who's going to be the starter. And then carry on will be that complimentary back. Um, Xavier McKinney went to the Giants. They needed safety help. They needed pass rush. They needed offensive line. They needed everything. Um, Kyle Duggar went to the Patriots. And it's interesting that that's the safety he chose. Um, there's all kinds of safety, safety help in this draft. Um, but Bill Belichick knows what he's doing. Utah Gross Matos went to Carolina. He was projected to be a first rounder, late first rounder. I think he went to the perfect situation. Carolina's really trying to rebuild that defense. Um, guard Robert Hunt has a powerful story. He went to Miami. So Miami is here getting um, a nice offensive line. They're trying to, you know, rebuild this team. They have a lot of needs. They had a lot of picks. So they made what was best for them. Uh, Jonathan Taylor to the Colts. So you put in Jonathan Taylor behind the best offensive line in football. Yeah, that's my sleeper fantasy pick right there. He's going to be a, uh, a second to third round fantasy pick. I'm telling you right now. LaVisca shall not went to the Jags. So you starting to see these receivers fall off the board. Cole Komet was a tight end, uh, the tight end that was um, highly regarded 
Uh, th- this was a weak tight end um, draft, tight end class. So Cole Komet went to uh, uh, to the Chicago Bears. Uh, Grant Dilpit went to the Browns. Antoine Winfield went to the Buccaneers. Antoine Winfield was my favorite safety in the entire draft. This guy right here is a ball hawk. He's going to be nasty in this league. KJ Hamler went to the Broncos. Another guy who has tons of speed. One of the uh, best speed receivers in this draft. So for those who missed out on Henry Ruggs or Jalen Regor, KJ Hamler is another guy with tons and tons of speed. Uh, Chase Claypool, a big wide receiver who, who can also play tight end, went to Pittsburgh. I'm telling you guys, every time Pittsburgh drafts a receiver, it's going to be a really good one. They're, they are just good at developing and drafting wide receivers. Jalen Johnson, corner from Utah, went to went to the Bears. So the Bears are just really stacking, man. They're just making that defense better and better and better. Trayvon Diggs fell. Uh, went to the Dallas Cowboys. See, the Dallas Cowboys, pretty much their theme was get the best available player, whether we need them or not. Uh, Jalen Hurts to the Philadelphia uh, Eagles was a bit of a surprise. Jalen Hurts in the second round, but then again, Carson Wentz is always hurt. He stays hurt. So um, they got a guy who they feel can come in and fill that gap that Nick Foles left behind. Uh, Cam Akers, I forgot about him. He went to the L.A. uh, Rams. That's a pretty good pick because he's going to be their starting running back. And uh, with Gurley gone, uh, that's a very good value pick. Um, J.K. Dobbins went to the Ravens. So the Ravens already had a good running game. Now you add J.K. to it. Man, this draft was just rich in talent. A lot of these guys in this second round, a lot of them are going to be pro bowlers. There's no doubt in my mind. Ezra Cleveland went to the Vikings. That was another potential trade suitor for Trent Williams. But the way that this weekend went and the way that the agents, I heard that the agents made a deal. They had a deal pending with the Vikings, but Trent Williams uh, nixed the deal. So all kinds of drama surrounding Trent Williams this weekend. Um, Denzel Mims uh, went to the Jets. I thought the Jets would go wide receiver in the first round, but since it's a deep draft filled with talent, they were able to get a receiver in the second round. It fits what they're trying to do. Uh, Josh Uche went to uh, the Patriots. Um, They just know what they're doing. The Patriots just know how to get solid guys that fit their system. Uh, Titans were able to get a starting corner uh, in the name of Kristen Fulton from uh, LSU, uh, A.J. Dillon running back uh, to Green Bay. Now, with the A.J. Dillon pick, I don't understand because Green Bay already has two pretty good running backs already, but you can never have more than enough running backs. So, after two rounds, Green Bay has not taken a wide receiver. They didn't take a wide receiver the whole draft, but... I have a feeling they're going to find some undrafted free agent guys that fit what they're trying to do, but we'll see. Offense definitely wasn't their problem, but you would feel that in a draft like this, where you have a lot of potential superstar receivers, that they would have gotten Aaron Rodgers another weapon. But anyways, to each his own, uh, Jeremy Chin rounds up that second round, solid, solid safety out of Southern Illinois. Ever wanted to make a podcast but never really knew how? Well, Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. There's a creation tool that allows you to record right from your phone or computer and as well as editing as well. Anchor will distribute your podcast to uh, places such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can also monetize from your podcast. Um, You can download the Anchor app for free at the App Store, or you can go to anchor.fm to get started. I'm going to break down a few teams that I felt had a pretty good draft. Um, The Arizona Cardinals, um, they got Isaiah Simmons at pick eight. 
that's great, great, great value. A lot saw uh, Simmons as a top five pick, but because of the way that the draft went, uh, they were able to get Simmons at pick eight, and then they were able to get Josh Jones at uh, in the third round. That was a, a highly regarded uh, offensive tackle out of Houston that some even felt would go, you know, anywhere from late first round to mid second round. So they were able to get this tackle in the third round. They were able to fill out. You know, the rest of the draft with a couple of defensive tackles, Leaky Fotu and Rashard Lawrence from LSU. And then a very good pick was Eno Benjamin in the seventh round. That's going to be a guy that's going to be able to fit their system. It's surprising that Eno Benjamin lasted that long. I really, really like that pick for them. And uh, ATL, um, they had a pretty decent draft. Uh, they were able to get some value picks along the way. Of course, they were not able to trade up, like I said earlier. But, you know, AJ Trail, they were able to get Marlon Davidson from Auburn. Very, very good player in the second round. They were able to get Matt Hennessy in the third round. That's a value, value pick. Matt Hennessy is one of the best centers in this draft. We we're able to get Mikel Walker from Fresno State as well. Um, one of the teams I felt had the best if not one of the best uh, drafts was the Ravens they kind of touched on every single need that they had they were able to get Patrick Queen in the first round J.K. Dobbins in the second uh, Justin Madubweke in the third uh, don't sleep on this kid from uh, Texas A&M he brings a lot to the table then they were able to get Devin DuVernay uh, from Texas in the third round that's great value I was on the phone with a Titans fan at that time, and a Titans fan wanted Devin DuVernay, but the Ravens were able to grab him one pick before the Titans were going to pick. Uh, they were able to get Malik Harrison from Ohio State inside linebacker. Uh, ben Bredesen, a pretty good guard out of Michigan. Uh, one thing about Michigan was I think four of their five offensive line were drafted in this draft. So that's a kudos to Michigan uh, for having all these uh, quality uh, offensive lineman that got taken in the draft. One of my favorite prospects in this draft was James Prochet, and they were able to get him in the sixth round. Uh, this guy right here, he's tough. He's a slot receiver, but he can also play outside. Then they were able to get Geno Stone in the seventh round. That's great, great value right there. Another team with a pretty good draft was the Carolina Panthers. Now, they took seven picks, and every pick they took was a defender. Uh, Derek Brown in the first, uh, Gross Matos in the second, Jeremy Chin in the second, uh, Troy Pride. That's a corner that a lot cannot believe. A lot of people did, did not believe that he would drop this far. They were able to get him in the fourth round. That's great value right there. Um, so I really see them improving on defense, but at the same time. With all these guys being rookies, it's going to be a learning experience. They're going to have to, you know, work and grow. Buffalo, they didn't have the best draft, but they had a pretty good draft. They were able to get A.J. Epinanza from Iowa in the first. So you get a nice quality pass rusher, a, a pass rusher that um, was definitely top five in a lot of people's um, boards. They were able to get him in the second round. Zach Moss in the third. That's great value. He'll get to compliment Singletary out there. Uh, Gabriel Davis, that's another value pick in the fourth round from UF's, from, from UCF. Jake Fromm in the fifth round. Uh, tons of tons of value there. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins in the sixth round. Dane Jackson in the seventh. Oh, I'm sorry. Buffalo did have a very good draft. They really did. They really did. They got lots of... Uh, quality guys and Jake Fromm will have an opportunity to really grow as a backup quarterback and who knows they might be able to flip this pick later so as we continue to dissect some of these um, teams drafts Dallas had a good draft um, they were able to get C.D. Lamb, Trayvon Diggs. Then they were able to get this guy from Utah. His name is Bradley Anay. 
a very, very good pass rusher. Um, in some people's boards, he was a top 10 pass rusher. In some people's boards, he was a top five pass rusher. And now I know that the draft was not deep with pass rushers, but to get Bradley Ane, who had a second round grade, to, to be able to get him in the fifth round, I mean, and, and then you come out with C.D. Lamb and Trayvon Diggs, pretty solid draft, man. You really cannot go wrong with taking the best player available. Uh, Cleveland had a solid draft. They were able to get G. 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 Wells, Grant Dilpit. Uh, they were able to get Harrison Bryant, solid tight end with upside and potential in the fourth round. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones um, in the sixth round. That was solid as well. So, like I said, man, this draft was filled with wide receivers and a lot of teams took three wide receivers. You know, some took two, you know. So, I, 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 I've, I've been telling people, this is the year to get your wide receiver. And out of all the teams in the NFL, 32 teams took at least one wide receiver. Okay. Uh, the Broncos were able to get Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, two solid wide receivers right there. They were able to get a, a corner from Iowa. They were able to get uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, very good, very good, talented center in the third round. Um, they were able to get Albert O from Missouri in the fourth round. Great value pick there. Uh, so you see the theme was to surround their young quarterback with talent. They were able to get a guard as well in the sixth round. So Denver, Denver's trying to really keep up uh, in terms of points because when Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs are in your division, you got to be able to score. You know, they already have a solid defense. They've been known as a defensive team. But now you bring in two star type receiver to add to what you already have. Um, it just bodes well. It just bodes well for them. Colts had a pretty good draft, in my opinion. When you get Michael um, Pittman Jr. in the in the second round and then Jonathan Taylor, I mean, you can't beat that. Those are two, literally two first round picks. You gain those two in the first in the second round. It's not bad at all. Then you're able to get Julian Blackman from Utah safety. Uh, you were able to get a, a, a quarterback in the fourth round, a quarterback that was considered the fourth or fifth. Sorry, the fifth best quarterback in most people's boards. Some people, he was better than Jordan Love. Some people think he's better than Jordan Love. So you're able to get a quarterback of this caliber in the fourth round. That's great value. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty good value. Was able to get uh, Jordan Glasslow from Michigan, linebacker. Michigan had a lot of linebackers go in this draft, man. Michigan had a lot of offensive linemen go in this draft. A lot of, um, you know, linebackers go in this draft. Kudos to Michigan once again. Jacksonville had a solid draft. Uh, they were able to get uh, C.J. Henderson, you know, in the in the first round. Uh, Clavon Chasen, first round. LaVisca shall not in the second round. Those are three starters right there. Uh, ben Barch, it's pretty good uh, tackle from St. John's right there. A value pick in the fourth round. And this draft was filled with so many corners. I mean, so many um, offensive linemen tackles. Uh, Shaquille Quarterman in the fourth round. That's a pretty good value pick right there. He's going to be able to fill a lot, a lot of needs that they're looking for. Colin Johnson, big, big tight end from Texas in the fifth round. So much value. So much value all around. Kansas City Chiefs. They know what they needed. They knew that they needed a, an explosive running back. They got that in the first round. They were able to get a, a a tackle that they can develop in the third round. Lucas Yang from TCU. Um, you've seen his name a lot. Uh, you've seen him, you know, potential second rounder, third rounder. So they get a tackle that they can groom. Was able to get Willie Gay Jr. from Michigan State. Chargers, you know, were able to get their franchise um, quarterback. You know, got a, a a nice linebacker in Murray. I love this pick, uh, Joshua Kelly in the fourth round. Such great value. Joe Reed from Virginia, Mr. Do-It-All. Tough as nails. And then my favorite pick that the Chargers made 
was being able to get K.J. Hill in the seventh round. Mark my words, K.J. Hill will be the starting slot for the Chargers. He's just that good. He's that. He's just that piece that fits with any offense. He can do some of the little things uh, to take away from Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. But also, don't sleep on Joe Reed as well. During this draft, um, there were a, a few trades. Some of the most notable ones were Matt Breida being traded to the Miami Dolphins from the San Francisco 49ers um, for a fifth round pick. And then also Trent Williams was traded in day three. He was traded for a fifth round pick from the 49ers and a third round pick next year. So had the Redskins made this deal sooner, it would have gotten more. But as this drug out, I believe it was a win to come out with a third round pick because it was starting to look really, really ugly. Oakland had a pretty good draft, in my opinion. Um, Henry Ruggs in the first. Arnett, they get a corner that they believe in. Uh, Lynn Bowden Jr., a weapon (laughs) from Kentucky. The guy can do it all. Brian Edwards, one of my favorite wide receivers. They got him in the third. So you get two weapons in the third in Brian Edwards and Bowden to go with Henry Ruggs, to go with the receivers that you already had. See, when they took Henry Ruggs in the first round, to me, I would have taken a a do-it-all receiver. But when you add Brian Edwards and Lynn Bowden, then it's like, okay, it now makes sense. It makes it a complete... A group of wide receivers. So they took three wide receivers. You know, they were greedy. They wanted it, you know, they wanted it bad. They wanted, you know, more offensive uh, uh, power. They were also able to get a safety from Clemson, Tanner Muse. And they were also able to get this guy named Amick Robertson. Just keep an eye out for him, man. Um, And it's funny that he fell to the fourth. He was a second rounder in my boards. Minnesota Vikings had a superb draft. We're able to get, you know, a receiver in uh, Justin Jefferson and Jeff Gladney. Jeff Gladney is a monster. If you don't know anything about Jeff Gladney, just go look at his tape. He's nasty. He's feisty. He's strong. Um, That's the kind of corner that they're looking for to replace uh, Xavier Rhodes. Then they were able to get Ezra Cleveland in the second round. That's a great, great pick. Um, Ezra Cleveland started um, skyrocketing and should have been a first rounder, but fell to the second. Was able to get Cameron Dantzler in the third. Great value pick from Mississippi State. Um, Troy Day. uh, Harrison Hand in the fifth round. Um, I mean, (laughs) these guys had a lot of picks and they made it work now. It'll be interesting to see if all their picks make the team, which I I highly doubt. They had seven, um, I mean, sorry, they had four seventh rounders. And for those seventh rounders that don't make the team, I'm pretty sure they'll be on a practice squad. So, you know, it's not a bad thing necessarily when you, you know, take seventh rounders. You know, you kind of give them a shot. Sometimes they make the team, sometimes they don't. Um, But, I mean, you, you just never know. Sometimes you can you, you, like you can find a really good gem in the seventh round. The Giants, I think they had an okay draft. Nothing special. You know, um, Matt Pert took him in the third. Nice value pick there. Um, Tate Crowder out of Georgia, linebacker, Mr. Relevant. Um, I don't really see nothing outside the first three picks for the Giants. Who knows? Maybe they proved me wrong. Eagles had a solid draft. I like the Eagles draft. They took a receiver that that they believed in. I'm not too sure on the Jalen Hurts pick. Um, I really think they jumped the gun on that one. I do like Driscoll. And I do like Prince Tega Wanaho. Those are two tackles that I was really looking at for my team to draft 
and the Eagles got both of them. Uh, the Eagles theme in this draft was speed, 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 speed. So with Jalen Ragor and John Hightower from Boise State, that's a lot of speed right there. Then was able to get Quaz, uh, Quez Watkins as well in this draft. They also traded for um, a wide receiver, Marquise Goodwin from the 49ers. Lots of speed. Um, all this is telling me is that Deshaun Jackson is done <laughs> with the team. Another impressive draft was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They came in and willed and dealed, moved up, moved down, you know, made some trades, things of that nature. And with the limited amount of picks they had, they were able to make it work. Their first four picks are just dynamic. Um, you get your tackle in the first round. You get Winfield. You get that 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 safety need field. Now, Keyshawn Vaughn out of Vanderbilt running back in the third round. I felt that they were better running backs. But Keyshawn Vaughn proved me wrong. Uh, Tyler Johnson, I really love that pick. That's a great value pick in the fifth round. This guy is a monster. This guy is a beast. And he'll be able to fit in with what uh, Tampa Bay is doing. So that's a very good pick right there. I really like that Tyler Johnson pick. Last but not least, uh, my team, the Washington Redskins. I really loved our draft. We were able to get Chase Young, the best player in the draft in the first round. Uh, we got a weapon, Antonio Gibson, a.k.a. Weapon. He's a wide receiver slash running back out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, this guy is explosive. Um, they're going to move him all around. I consider him more of a wide receiver who can play running back. Um, I really, really like that pick. It just gives Haskins another option to work with. Um, Sadiq Charles fell to the fourth round because of, you know, issues, off the field issues. Um, but he he is phenomenal talent. He could have gone in the second round. That's a great value pick to be able to get him at the top of the fourth round. Um, he has a he has a shot to be the starting left tackle this year for the Washington Redskins. Um one of my favorite picks was uh, Antonio Gandy Golden out of Liberty. Yeah, I hear about, oh, well, he played in a small school. Look at the tape. He's 6'4". Uh, he runs a 4'6", but his game speed is definitely faster than that 40. Um, the guy is phenomenal, has a chance to be a guy kind of like Kenny Galladay, uh, Devontae Parker. Uh, think of those big receivers. And this guy has amazing hands, amazing hands. I really think that he can compete to be the uh, wide receiver, too, for the Washington Redskins. I really see him starting this year. Um, Keith Ishmael out of uh, San Diego State. Um, I was talking to somebody before the draft, and I said, Ron Rivera is going to go with the best pick available in every round. And don't be surprised if they take a center. Chase Roulier is a very good center, but he can walk next year. He might want a lot of money. So I felt like this is a center for the future. If it goes that way, if it doesn't, you just have a guy who can play multiple spots. He's played some guard. He's played some tackle. This guy right here is versatile. He's very athletic. And I think that he can do more damage in the run game. Check out his tape. Then to round out the Redskins draft, uh, Kareem Carl and uh, James Smith Williams, two seventh rounders. <sighs> thing with seven rounders man i i rather trade seven rounders to get to you know like to move up in the draft but sometimes they pan out you just never know and with jack del rio and ron rivera really doing their thing they know the kind of players that they're looking for so who knows uh, i've looked at tape on uh on kareem carl he looks pretty tough man three years starter out of arkansas um, who knows, but I really, really like the Redskins draft to come into this draft and not have a second rounder. I, I feel like they came out very well. Um, that pick that they got uh, for uh, Trent Williams was the uh, Keith Ishmael pick. So I'll keep an eye on that and as well as what the pick in uh, next year ends up being. So, guys, it's a wrap for this pod uh thank you guys for always supporting me man thank you guys for listening uh please be sure to share this podcast with anybody who loves the nfl anybody who loves sports in general be sure to follow me on ig at ts with manny as well as twitter same handle 
at TS with Manny. Thank you guys. Much love. Let's get it.